Greetings. I'm Dr. Noreen Jacks, and thank you for taking five with me. For just a few moments now, I want to speak with you about biblical hospitality. Are you aware that hospitality in the ancient world was considered a God-given obligation rather than an option as it's often regarded in our contemporary Western world? To offer a weary traveler the comfort and pleasures of one's tent or humble mud brick dwelling quite literally meant the difference between life and death and the hostile desert environment of the Near East. I became very interested in the concept of biblical hospitality when I learned the definition of the compound term from the Greek text. You see here on the screen, the term is philoxenos, meaning hospitality or generosity to guests, and it can also mean enemy. Let's take this word apart now. Phileo means brotherly love, and xenos means stranger, foreigner, alien, or even enemy. So true biblical hospitality is not what we think. It is not entertaining your neighbors or your friends or extended family. It is the love of strangers. It is even the love of enemies and entertaining one's enemies. Hospitality was considered the traveler's right and the host's privilege in antiquity. For this reason, a guest was not expected to express thanks to his host. After all, the host might be in need of hospitality himself soon, and the host might be entertaining angels unaware, as we see in the case of Abraham. Abraham greeted his heavenly visitors at the gate of his tent, according to Genesis chapter 18, verse 1. Let me tell you about the gate or the door of the tent. In antiquity, it was regarded as the patriarch's throne. It was the place where covenants were cut and business was conducted. The custom remains today among Bedouin tribal groups where men still watch for stranger guests. You see, hospitality is regarded as a sacred duty with the belief that guests are sent from God. When you have a moment, I suggest reading Genesis chapter 18, verses 1 through 8. In the interest of time, I have summarized Abraham's legendary hospitality in this slide. There's a lot of verbal action taking place in this scene. Abraham ran and bowed and gave food and water to his guests. He provided foot washing, or rather he would have the lowliest servant in his household perform that task. Abraham called the men Lord, and he referred to himself as their servant. This was done in accordance with the tradition of the day. Abraham then told his wife Sarah to hurry with the food, and it appears that he personally killed a choice calf. Veal, veal imagined the most expensive meat to entertain strangers. We see that he spared no expense. It's no wonder that Abraham has been named the patron saint of hospitality workers. In this slide, we see Lot and his daughters. Lot also experienced an angelic visitation and extended similar hospitality to his guests. In this series, you will learn why Lot felt obligated to offer his virgin daughters to the wicked men of Sodom just prior to the destruction of the city. Hospitality in the world of the Bible is just one of eight sessions I have prepared for you in my series, A Window into Bible Times, an overview of the manners and customs of the Hebrew people and their neighbors. Other topics in this series include how geography aids Levantine archeology, span weapons and warfare of the biblical era, the role of women and marriage in the Near East, birthing, raising, and educating children, and I discuss the agriculture, food preparation, and diet in Bible times, and the religious practices of the Hebrews and their neighbors. And we conclude with the funeral and burial practices in the lands of the Bible. Each session is filled with fascinating facts that I hope will make the Bible become a pop-up book for you. It is difficult to comprehend the scriptures without knowledge of the manners and customs of antiquity. This course is intended to lay the background for serious Bible study. It is available from Bible Interact. Check it out today. Shalom.